In the first chapter of this walkthrough, you experimented with the basic operations of MRI CroGL, such as the opacity slider, the crosshairs, and the brightness settings. We will examine these in more detail, as well as viewing multiple images simultaneously. We will begin by loading a functional image. In this case, the T2 star weighted sub-10 underscore T1W image from the sub-10 func folder in the flanker directory, which you can either open with the file menu or by clicking and dragging it into the GUI. You should see something like this. As you saw in an earlier chapter, left clicking and dragging in any of the window panes will move the crosshairs, which in turn updates the view in the other two panes. You can keep the crosshair where it is and scroll through the slices in the current pane by scrolling the mouse wheel either up or down. Holding the control key while scrolling allows you to zoom in and out of the image. Scrolling one image at a time can be done manually, either through the left and right arrow keys and up and down arrow keys, or by clicking on the L, R, A, P, S, and I buttons in the 2D slice selection subwindow. If you prefer a different color for the crosshair, click the color button and select any color that you like. The width of the crosshairs can also be modified by increasing or decreasing the value in the width field by clicking on the up or down arrows. A full list of the combination of mouse clicks and button presses can be found by clicking on help and then mouse gestures. You will also see a time series displayed at the bottom of the viewing window, representing the signal intensity for the voxel at the center of the crosshair. Clicking at a different part of the time series will jump to that volume, and the volume index will be updated in the layers window. For example, 54 out of 146 means that you are currently viewing the 54th volume in the time series out of 146 volumes total. You can flip through the volumes by either pressing Option and N to advance one volume, or Option plus V to go back one volume. Or you can flip through the volumes automatically at a steady rate by clicking Display Animate Volumes. If you want to turn this off, again go to Display and uncheck animate volumes. Similar to Fossilize, you can also generate a seed-based correlation map by selecting Display Seed Correlation Pearson. This will create a correlation map displaying the connectivity between the time series centered at your crosshairs and every other voxel in the brain. You can remove the correlation map by unchecking the box or right-clicking on it and selecting Close. Next, we will load an anatomical image. In this case, the T1 weighted sub 10 underscore T1W image from the sub 10 anat folder in the flanker directory. If you click and drag it into the graphical user interface, you should see something like this. Modifying the values in the darkest and brightest fields are useful for setting the thresholds for which voxels will be shown. For example, you may not want to see any voxels below an intensity of 30, or anything brighter than an intensity of 300. By setting the darkest threshold to 30 and the brightest threshold to 300, the darkest color, in this case black, will be set to those voxels with an intensity of 30, and white will be assigned to those voxels with an intensity of 300. One of the new features in MRI CroGL is the ability to visualize the changes in intensity over multiple slices. First, you will need to find the top of a hidden window pane at the bottom of the MRI CroGL viewer. Click and drag it up to see another window. Then find an axial slice that clearly shows both of the lateral ventricles. It may take some time to find an appropriate slice. But once you do, click somewhere in the left-hand side of the brain, hold down the Option key, and then click 
and drag the mouse to the right hand side of the brain. You will see an intensity profile generated in the bottom window, depicting how the intensity changes over the slices that you selected. Note that in this case there are two dips in intensity, indicating where the line you drew crossed over the lower intensity ventricles. Leaving the anatomical image loaded, click on File, Add Overlay, and select one of the functional images from the Sub 10 Funk directory. In this case, we'll go to Desktop, Flanker FSL, which has already been processed in FSL, and then the Sub 10 Funk directory, and we will select the first functional run of data. Recall that viewing both the anatomical and functional images can be useful for seeing how far apart the images are before any preprocessing has been done. Images that start farther away from each other may need a larger search area during co-registration in order to find a good fit, or the origins may need to be manually centered before doing any further preprocessing. In this case, the images are quite far away from each other, with the functional image highlighted in red. After you've run co-registration and normalization, you can use MRI CroGL to evaluate how well the functional and anatomical images are aligned, and how those images in turn are aligned to standardized space. If you run your analyses through FSL, for example, you can find the output from these steps in the reg directory from your feet folder. Open the highres.nai.gz image from subject sub tens run one dot feet directory. Once you click and drag it into the GUI, lower the value of the brightest field to 800 to better see the contrast between the tissue types. Then click on file, add overlay, and select the image example funk to high res.nai.gz, which you can also find in the run one feet reg directory. Once you load it, you should see something like this. Now, there is nearly complete overlap of the functional image on top of the anatomical image, which is what we would expect if the co-registration was successful. However, it is difficult to tell how well some of the internal structures are aligned, such as the ventricles and basal ganglia. To see the edges of features such as the sulci, highlight the example funk to high res image. Click on Options and select Find Edges. This will create a new overlay called Edge Example Funk to High Res, and you can see this image more clearly by unchecking the box next to Example Funk to High Res. Now we can see more clearly where the edges of the brains are aligned and how well the interior structures match up. To get an even better view of the edges on top of the anatomical, uncheck the box next to example funk to high res, and then change the opacity slider for edge example funk to high res. Once you have familiarized yourself with how to load anatomical and functional data, you can begin to use the software to overlay statistical maps on a template image. This will be the first step towards creating a publication quality image of your results. We will see how to do that and more in the next video.